Liverpool. A sight of goal. A wonderful finish. Cody Gakpo. David Nunez makes it two. Roberto Firmino. It's in. It's seven. Absolutely extraordinary. Just to put it into context, Manchester United's joint heaviest defeat in their history. And there's the other times they conceded seven. Uh, in 1926, then 30, and 1931, the last time they conceded seven goals in a game, 92 years ago. That is a screenshot for Liverpool fans all round the world. They have beaten Manchester United in the heaviest manner in history. Here comes their record goal scorer and their captain. Mo, Jordan, a record-breaking day. That is Liverpool's biggest ever win over Manchester United. What do you make of that? It was, a, it was a fantastic day for everyone. I thought performance level from every single player was top quality today. Um, something that we've been missing for a while, of course. But I think today um, you could see the energy levels and everything was was back. And to be fair, the last few Premier League games have showed um, with the results, clean, clean sheets that we've kept, we're on the right path. And today was a proper performance. Mo, do you echo those sentiments? Did you feel it was coming? And just how special was that today? Yeah, it's a very special to win a game like that uh, with that result. But uh, in the same time, I don't want that give us like we go to the next game with overconfidence or something. We just need to to stay humble and just play and win the games because we also we are not in the position we wanted to be. Um, but hopefully, that give us a good push and uh, we make us keep winning. One position that you personally, and you are now Liverpool's record-breaking all-time leading scorer in the Premier League. You've just gone past Robbie Fowler. What does that mean to you? Uh, it's it's a very special more because it's um, it's not a coincidence that he gets these numbers. You know, he dedicates his life to football every single day. How hard he works. He's the first one in, last one out, and um, yeah, it's not a coincidence. So I'm delighted for him. How much is that a shot in the arm as well, though, for your quest for top four this season now? Uh, hopefully, it, I think in, now we are fifth in the table, so hopefully, we're, and three points uh, behind uh, Spurs, so we have still, I think, one game in hand as well. I, I'm not sure, but we just like need to, to enjoy the, the game, and I think when we play to enjoy the game, we just to play our, our football, and that's what we showed last couple of weeks. Is it possible, out of all 129, say, which one was your favourite, or was it the 129th, because it meant so much to you? The last one. I don't think it's a really great goal, but I think it was really special. Congratulations. You were the player of the match. John, will you do the honours, please? Yeah. Oh, thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Cheers. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah, we'll come to Mo Salah's uh, numbers in a moment, but uh, can you understand Jordan Henderson there, Michael? As a Liverpool player, to play in that fixture, and look at the scoreline of seven. It, it, it will take some sinking in, won't it? Yeah, I think so. I think anybody that, that, that walks in now and looks at the result, they, they must think, well, Manchester United must have gone down to ten men in the first... Maybe even nine or men. Or there's an error on your or TV some, Or there's something wrong with the TV, <laughs> or, or we've made a mistake. Um, but obviously none of those are true. It was, uh, it was just an incredible day at Anfield. And as I said earlier, Anfield has seen some of the most incredible nights and days of football over the years, but that's going to be ranked right amongst them. I mean, it's a, it's a monumental score, monumental effort, uh, monumental performance, and everything about it was just was staggering. I mean, you're still a little bit of shock now that, uh, that this Manchester United team that are playing so well can get beat by anybody 7-0, but let alone their arch-rivals. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's the point, isn't it? As Michael said, we, um, we talked long and hard about United's form coming into this. It's just a, a really freakish afternoon, I think. I don't think, uh, as you mentioned before, seven goals out of eight chances. Everything did seem to fall perfectly for them. And I think the disappointing thing from, uh, from United's point of view is when you... And I, I was mentioning before the, before the game, waxing lyrical about the characters and, and leaders we've seen 
in the team. I think once you get to three or four, you get your Casemiro, you got your Varane, playing in big games, big teams, you say, right, stay here. Don't go anywhere. We're not conceding any more goals. We don't make this embarrassing. But unfortunately, Liverpool took all, well, all but one of their chances and it was a, a free night to have to accept. Yeah, from a United point of view, a disaster. But from a Liverpool point of view, what a day. We're delighted to be joined by the captain, Jordan Henderson, live at Anfield. Now, Jordan, well done. Um, is that still sinking in, to win a game of that magnitude with that scoreline? A little bit. Um, I knew it was a big game coming into it. You know, United have been playing really well of late, just won a trophy, so we wanted to come here and, and perform to the levels we're capable of and we had out the day to get the result. And um, I thought overall the performance was top from everyone and, and you get your rewards in the end. Particularly in that second half, obviously it was only 1-0 at half-time. I mean, what did that feel like in the second half? Attack after attack and they all seemed to be going in. Yeah, we're sort of building momentum second half. I thought we started the game really well. You know, first 20, 25 minutes um, was, was very good. And then maybe 10, 15 minutes United um, got into it a little bit more. But second half, I thought we dominated for large parts. And then um, we're clinical in front of goal, which is, which is important. Jordan, it's Michael here. I was just wondering what the mentality is after a, a result like that. One, one you're obviously euphoric. It's a great scoreline. But, of course, secondly, there's still a job to do. There's still been a disappointing season and... and that respect as well for a team that are playing so well, that have already won a trophy. Where's the balance here between celebrating and, and obviously still being humble and, and pushing on for the season? Well, I think you've got to enjoy it, you know, playing in big games like this um, against United. It's always a fantastic game. So to, to win it 7-0 is a big, a big moment, really, um, and one I'm sure we'll look back on. So you've got to enjoy it, but at the same time, you're right, you need to stay humble. And at the end of the day, it's, it's just another three points um, and we've still got a long way to go. Um, to, to try and qualify for the Champions League at least. So um, it's another game. We've won, yep, enjoy it, but we'll move on quickly because the games come thick and fast and we'll have another, another tough game next week against Bournemouth. Jordan, you know Mo Salah better than most. You see him day in, day out, what he, what he puts into his game. To break Robbie Fowler's record of all people today and in this fixture, in that magnitude as well, in front of the cop, was that almost written in the stars for him? Yeah, it was a great night for him and I'm, I'm delighted for, for Mo, you know, it's not a coincidence that he's hit these numbers, you know, he dedicates his life to the game and um, first one in the training ground, last one out, always in the gym, doing the right things, eating the right things and, um, and he gets his rewards and tonight is, is an amazing um, night for him personally but also for the team. And Jordan, just looking at the league table there, I mean, it was only seemed a week or so ago <laughs> that uh, Liverpool were in ninth place, now up to fifth. Now with the Champions League in, in touch and distance, how important is it for a club of, of Liverpool's size, you know, in terms of recruiting players, keeping players, you know, big players happy in the Champions League? How important is that fourth place? It's really important, you know, like you see in the, the club like Liverpool need to be playing Champions League football. And, um, and yes, the season hasn't, has been disappointing at times and we haven't performed to the levels that we're capable, that we're capable of for, for different reasons. Um, but I think we're sure tonight we can, we can still perform um, as a team. Uh, we've got a few big players that have come back over the last few weeks that, that's helped. And now it's about trying to keep everybody fit, trying to keep the energy levels and the performance levels high like they were today right till the end of the season. And if we do that, then we'll have a good chance. But yes, of course, it's, it's big to try to get into that top four for next season. And just finally, Jordan, with 13 league games to go, what kind of bounce is a result like that today to give you now? It is a big result, you know, but the performance is the most important thing, I feel. You know, I think the performance level is, has been really important the last few weeks, especially Premier League, I feel as though this has been coming and, and performing for the full 90 minutes, which I feel as though we did today. Um, but we need to continue that, we need to keep going, keep working for each other and, um, and hopefully, like I say, we can go on a little run and end the season well. Very well done. Thanks for joining us. And do thank your umbrella holder as well. So we, we do appreciate much. that. Cheers. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Jordan. Cheers. See you. <laughs> Big smile. The Liverpool captain in the rain at Anfield. The other side of the story is Manchester United's heaviest defeat for 92 years. Here's their captain, Bruno Fernandes. Bruno, you've had a few moments there in the change rooms. Um, is it possible to explain exactly what happened there today? Oh, the standard was not uh, our at our level. Uh, that's why we didn't win. Uh, we didn't get anything from the game. I think first half we did really well. We controlled the game. We had we had the most chances probably. 
Uh, Liverpool find the goal. Uh, obviously, we came to the second half and we conceded uh, we conceded too many goals from uh, from our mistakes and from uh, from positions where we should be aware of what Liverpool wanted for the, from the game. Like you say, at half time I and mean, even at one nil, recently it felt like United would have and, and normally did come back from games like that. So, what changed in that second half then? Oh, as I said, we did too too many mistakes. That is not at our standard, our level, the, the level we used to be. Um, we gave we gave too much space away for them to counter. We knew how uh, how, how good they, they could be in, in a counter attack. Uh, it's one of the best weapons that they have, and uh, we didn't control that uh, good enough. There's been an awful lot of games recently. There's been four matches since your last Premier League game alone. It, is that starting to catch up now, the amount of games that are coming and quite intense games as well, including that cup final? We can't use that as, a, as an excuse. If you want to, to play as for this top club, uh, being in the, 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 all the competitions, fight for all the competitions, we have to, we have to play all the games and we have, to, we have to want to play more and more. Often, so we we can use that as a, as an excuse. We just uh, our standard was not um, good enough, uh, and uh, and that's it. So how do you stop this having a big impact on the rest of the season now? Uh, we had we had worse moments than this, and, uh, and and we came back from that. So it's it's obviously it hurts a lot. It's but it's still just one game. It's just, we lost three points. Uh, even if he's doing with this kind of result, is is again, as I said, um, as I always said, that uh, big games don't give you more than three points, and obviously can get you all down of confidence and of of everything. But uh, the team has to have the belief, as, as as always, because what we have done in the past has brought us into the position we are today, uh, and this result can't change what is being our mentality. Always appreciate you talking Thank to you very me. Much. Thanks. Man. That's the Manchester United captain. I, I, I get what he's saying, Paul, but as a Manchester United player, it isn't just three points lost there, is it? It, it, it? Given the scoreline and where it is and who it's against. No. No, it's not. Um, I, do, I do actually think he, he spoke quite well there. He wasn't looking for excuses. He's saying, you know, being at a big club, you have to expect to play a lot of games during the season. Look, they have played a lot of games. I actually feel sorry for him when, he, when he's played, actually. He's been pushed out to many positions now to do a job for, for a team to accommodate people. He was on the left today, he's been on the right, he's played through the middle. He's, he has been a little bit all over the place and I don't think, to the, well, you can't say any of the players performed the way they should have done, but I thought he was especially poor today, really. Um, it wasn't his, his greatest afternoon. But again, he, he, being played all over the place doesn't help you. I think there's a couple of players in that team that, when it comes to big game like this, big games like this, I don't think they're they're quite at the level. I think the right back position could be a problem. They clearly need a, a centre forward if Martial's going to have the injury record he's got. And there are there are issues in the team, but it's it's difficult to be critical of this team for what's happened over the last so many games. Since that, since that Bradford game, especially, look, there's been disappointments and there's been games where the keeper has had to save them at times, and they've come on and made changes and. Been different and you know, made made cha made a difference to games, the substitutes especially, where they've given them a real lift when really they could have been out of games. But look, that is just such a freak. I keep saying the word freak. You, so you're not concerned with any hangover going forward from this. Well, that, that, that's the big question. Now. I don't think so. I think, as I mentioned, with the characters that are in the team, the experience the managers got. I think they'll come out of this OK. I, you have to be slightly worried, of course, you, but I, th I think when you look back at it and you see there's, they only created eight chances, Liverpool at Anfield, I'll tell you what, in normal years, you'd probably accept that. But you, there's no way in a million years you'd expect them to score seven. Liverpool, I, I bet we've played against Liverpool, created 20, 25 chances in the past and not scored a goal. It was just such a freakish afternoon. and I, I, I'm glad that he won't blame tiredness and it's how they react from this, really. As I said, they've got... Big experience in that team. They've got a squad now where they could possibly freshen up for Thursday night, especially play players who won't be scarred by what happened today. But I think there's a big job now from the manager and the and the support staff to really, you know, get this team lifted. Maybe just a couple of days off or something, get away from that and you know, refocus on an important end to the season. The fact that United have lost away to Arsenal, City, and Liverpool now is that just a 
a guide as to perhaps they're just a fraction off the top two? Well, I, yeah, I think so. I think we mustn't forget how far Manchester United have come and we mustn't, you know, all of a sudden think, right, they're title contenders and they're going to win everything because they are still, you know, a little bit behind the likes of Manchester City. Um, you could argue they're, you know, Arsenal and, and, and teams like that, they're, they're hunting down, um, although Arsenal have, have, have gone again. But, I mean, in this great run that they had, and I asked Paul the question just before kickoff, they haven't... They've been getting great results, but I've not really been out of my seat thinking, wow, this club is going to take the Premier League by storm, let's say, next season. I've been really impressed with the progress that Manchester United have made, but there's still a long way to go. Um, and that was before today's result. Obviously, today's result, result makes you think that even more. Um, one question I would have, was, which Paul just raised before, would be team selection. Um, there's one position on that pitch before today's game that everybody thinks, wow, this could be the match-winning air. تشيلسي يستعين بجماهيره لتصحيح المسار اعلن تشيلسي المنافس في الدوري الانجليزي الممتاز لكره القدم اليوم الاربعاء عن تشكيل مجلس استشاري يضم ممثلين عن الجماهير للمشاركه في المناقشات وتبادل المعلومات والافكار بشان الامور التي تؤثر على المشجعين وذلك لزياده التفاعل مع عشاق الفريق وفي يونيو الماضي وافقت انديه الدوري الانجليزي الممتاز الانجليزي الممتاز على خطه لتعزيز العمل الجماعي مع المشجعين في الدوري تتضمن تشكيل مجالس استشاريه للجماهير لزياده التفاعل وقال تشيلسي ان المجلس الاستشاري سيتالف من سته ممثلين عن المشجعين واضاف في بيان سيشارك المجلس الاستشاري في المناقشات وعمليه تبادل المعلومات والاراء بشان القرارات المحتمله التي تؤثر على جماهير تشيلسي وسينصب التركيز على الرؤيه الاستراتيجيه للنادي واهدافه اضافه الى اتخاذ القرارات على المدى المتوسط والطويل وواصل سيجتمع المجلس الاستشاري ثلاث مرات على الاقل سنويا مع اعضاء مجلس اداره تشيلسي في حضور كبار مديرين تنفيذيين للنادي ايضا وشكلت أندية أخرى في الدوري الإنجليزي الممتاز بما في ذلك مانشستر يونايتد وليفربول مجالس مماثلة في السنوات الأخيرة نتمنى الوصول إلى حلول من أجل الابتعاد عن شغب الملاعب في الدوري الإنجليزي وبالتوفيق لجميع الأندية الإنجليزية